Today we are going to use the perspective grid tool, which is used for perspective drawing. At first it can seem a little bit complicating and daunting, but once you understand the basics it's pretty easy. You can find the perspective grid tool in the toolbar or use the shortcut Shift P. To close it you can press Ctrl Shift I. So let's start to find out what types of perspective grid you can use in Adobe Illustrator. Illustrator provides presets for 1 point, 2 point and 3 point perspectives. You can find them at View Perspective Grid and go to 1 point, 2 point or 3 point perspective. You can also set up a grid by using Define Grid. The differences between them are quite logical. You either see one side of a cube, two sides of a cube or three sides of a cube. Now that we know the differences between them, we're going to set up a grid by using Define Grid. We're going to click View, Perspective Grid and Define Grid. To save a new preset, you can give it a name. You can also select the type of the preset, 1 point perspective, 2 point perspective or 3 point perspectives. The units to measure the grid, you can choose centimeters, inches, pixels or points. The scale can be used to get close to real world measurements. You can choose your own grid cell size at grid line every. In the viewing angle you can choose the angle you're viewing your cube. 45 means you're looking straight at it, at the corner of the cube. If you make an angle greater than 45 degrees, the right vanishing point will be closer than the left vanishing point. The viewing distance is the distance between your viewing point and the object. And if you would like, you can choose your own colors for the grid. The last choice we have is the opacity of the grid. So, now we're done, we got the two point perspective grid we can work with. When you're still not satisfied with your grid, even after defining your grid, you can choose the perspective grid tool and work with the sliders until you're satisfied. You can slide your horizon height, your left finishing point, your right finishing point, the finishing point of your floor and even your left or your right grid. So now that the grid is set up, let's get started with some drawing. One of the most important things with drawing is the circle with the cube in it at the top of your screen. This cube will show you which grid is active as so which grid you are going to draw on. You can also quick swap between them by using the keys 1, 2 or 3. 1 is your left grid, 2 is your floor and 3 is your right grid. The key 5 will also be important but we will get to that later on. Ok, now that we got some basic information, let's get started with some drawing on the grid. Remember, to switch to your other grid, press 1, 2 or 3. Now that we already have drawn some objects, we're going to see how we can move them by using the Perspective Selection tool, which can be found when you right click the Perspective Grid tool or use the shortcut Shift V. Now you can see we can move the objects along the grid we place them on. Remember to use the Perspective Selection tool and not the Normal Selection tool. Now you know how to draw shapes on a grid. Next up is creating a 3D looking object by using the key 5. With the key 5 you can move objects along the vanishing points. Let's get started with drawing a rectangle on your first grid.
Now that I have placed two rectangles, I'm going to show you what the key 5 does. When you hold the key 5 and you drag the object, you can see the movement across the horizon, while keeping the perspective. By holding the ALT key and the 5 key, you can duplicate the shape. To create a 3D like shape, we're going to use the pen tool. To get a better view of what we're doing, we're going to press Ctrl Y, which is the shortcut for the outline. To create a 3D shape, we're going to combine the right side of the cube and we're going to combine the floor of the cube. We're going to repeat that step for the upper side of the cube and the right side of the cube. Now that we are done, we're going to press Ctrl Y again to get a normal view. So now that we are done, you can see we have three separate sides for the cube, which we can color to create a 3D like shape. You can choose any color you like, just go to from dark to light in three steps. Now that we have colorized the panels, you can see the 3D like shape. Next up, I'm going to show you how you can go from a flat design to a 3D design by placing it on the grids. I'm going to drag my uh, flat text, which I already created, to an uh, artboard we are working on. Now we use the perspective selection tool to place it on one of the three grids of the cube. Remember that you can switch between the grids by using one, two or three. You can drag and adjust the shape any way you like. Let's give it some color and place it to the front to see the result. Let's do it again for the lower cube. Don't forget to arrange it to the front to see the result. We will place the text 2018 on another grid by using the keys 2 or 3. Drag and adjust it any way you like. This white text is in the darker shade of the cube, so let's make it a bit darker to see the effect. And if you would like, you can also use uh, some 3D effects on the text by uh, using the key 5 as we explained earlier. To do so, hold the ALT key and the 5 key and drag it a bit to the back and give it a darker shade. Make sure to arrange it just behind the white text. So this is it for today, I hope you learned a lot about the perspective grid tool and if you'd like this video you can subscribe to my channel for more videos. I want to thank you for watching and I hope to see you back.